All right, praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for allowing us to be here another time. We uh, pick it up in the book of John where we left off in our verse by verse study of the book of John. We are in John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Today we will begin from verse 17, John chapter 4. Oh, verse 16, sorry. Praise the Lord. Let us bow heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here another time. Lord, as we gather in your sanctuary, we pray for your presence to fill this place. Lord, we pray that you lift us from the miry clay, upon our feet upon the rock to stay. Place a song within our soul to sing, songs of praises, hallelujah. Encourage our hearts, lift every burden from our shoulders. Pray for liberty in the spirit. Pray for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us, manifesting our lives, O God, by wisdom, knowledge, discernment, and revelation. Bless us as we enter into your words today. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we pick up from verse um, 16. Jesus said unto her, meaning the woman, uh, he continued his conversation with the woman at, at the well. He offered her. Um, living water, and uh, the woman, she showed great interest in receiving this living water because she didn't want to make all of those trips back to the well to receive, to, to, you know, draw water from the well. So she was interested in the offer that Jesus was giving her. She thought it was um, physical water Jesus was talking about. So Jesus said unto her, go call thy husband, and come hither. Now Jesus is hitting the nail right on the head. And Jesus is, he, he, he took a, a different shift here in the sense that he is bringing this woman to acknowledge her sins because uh, the water that he was promising to give her, the living water that Jesus was promising to give her, could not be poured into dirty into a dirty container. So the container in which Jesus intended to pour this living water in have to be cleansed. And uh, that's the reason why he's saying to the woman here, go call thy husband. And that's where the root of the problem is. In other words, the sin problem had was to be addressed. Before God could bless us, the sin problem in our life must be addressed. You know, God can't pour out His blessings upon sin. Sin has to be confessed. Confess. The Bible said if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us away from all unrighteousness. And uh, the Scripture also said that if we regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. So here we see that uh, Jesus is bringing this lady to the point where she has to make a confession, make the confession of her sins. So he said, go and call thy husband and come hither. You know, it's a beautiful thing when husband and wife could go before God. Husband and wife could present themselves before the throne of grace. The Bible said, let us come boldly before the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. And I am thinking, if this lady really had a husband in her life, and she could have said, well, wait, I'm going to get my husband, and she returned with her husband. I wonder what the situation would have turned out to be like if she did have a husband. But we know, you know, by going through the story, she didn't have one at that time. The one that she had was not her real husband. Jesus revealed to her that she was married five times. And uh, she had five husbands, and the one that she was living with was not hers. So she didn't have a husband. Verse 17, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And, you know, I don't know how you guys really read in this and how it's coming out to you. But when I read this where she said she have no husband, and I think that's where we left off last week. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. I can feel um, some pain and some scorn coming out of those words. When she say, I have no husband, you could feel some scorn 
you know, coming out of those words. And you could feel some pain coming out of those words when she made those, uh, 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 pronounce those words, I have no husband. And, you know, I was thinking about women, the suffering of women over, uh, you know, the last couple thousand years or even from the beginning of time. Uh, my mind was just reflecting on the kind of suffering that women undergone. And women went through a lot of suffering, eh? Women went, went through a lot of suffering. When you think about it, women seem to be always on the receiving end where suffering, degrading, abusing, you know, is concerned. And, you know, uh, when you look at some of these things that women went through and the way women was treated, you know, even in the Bible, women are treated very badly. You know, most times you see um, women will be looked at as property in the Bible. And most men, they abuse, you know, their women and they treat them so badly. And, you know, I was thinking, I don't know if anybody ever think about that, but, you know, I was thinking that kind of ah, key kind of fashion sometimes. You know, I was thinking, if women couldn't provide sex for us as men and bear our children, what kind of use or what kind of appreciation you think we would have really have for women? If women couldn't provide sex, and, you know, bear our children. When you look back over the period of time and you look through history and see how men especially degrade women and they abuse women, if you take out the sex factor and the um, bearing of children, what kind of, what kind of appreciation do you think we might have for them? And I, I, want the, I, want, I want some interaction. What kind of appreciation do you think we would have had for women, when we consider the way how they were being treated over, you know, for such a long period of time. You know, we use them as our floor mat, use them to clean our house, use them to cook our food, use them to prepare clothes and all of that. And with all of, you know, the things that they're doing for us, still the, the abuse keep coming, the bad treatment keep coming. You know, the verbal abuse, the physical abuse, still coming. Am I saying anything wrong? No, <laughs> no seriously, I was, really, I was really thinking about that. I was really thinking about that. And, you know, when you really look and see the, the, the kind of treatment that women really receive, and they, they, they really receive the worst end of the stick. Yes, sir. Does that relate to the, um, the cost that God uh, give them in the get of Eden as a result of that? Well, uh, brother, um, it's a good question. Yeah. And uh, I know that uh, because of uh, Eve led the human race into sin, uh, the, Lord, the curse that the Lord uh, pronounced upon Eve or upon you know, all women, for that matter, is is the, 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 the pain of childbearing. In, in pain and suffering, she is going to bring forth children. And uh, the, uh, another part of it is that she will try to supersede or try to exercise power over her husband. But then, God never tells no man to go out and treat a woman bad. The, 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 Lord, the Lord do approve of men abusing women and looking down on women. Yes, Sister McKenzie, go ahead. Yes, the, the cost was that um, he will have to buy the sweat of his brow. He is going to bring forth fruit. But that though, that, I, I don't see because of that, anybody tried to degrade man because of that. So um, because of that um, curse, for lack of a better word, that was pronounced upon Eve, that, that already give anybody, or God didn't give anybody permission to um, abuse women and to degrade women. But, you know, as I said, thinking about this, I was thinking about it this morning, and uh, the, the suffering that all of these um, 
women go through. And I really admire these women when I look at um, women over that period of time and see how the amount of licks that they don't take physically and verbally. And still women, women have a kind of bounce back kind of um, ability within them. It doesn't matter how far, you know, you, you try to throw them away. They still tend to bounce back. And I'm not really saying that because I'm proud of what men do to women. I, I'm really ashamed of, of the way how, you know, men treat women over the time. And when you, when you go and you see all of these um, cases where men will make five children with their woman and they will just leave them and go, and then the woman there, she's suffering, but she's not going away. She's still staying there with those five kids. Look at the guy who won the uh, poor ball last week. Anybody hear about that? Yeah. This, um, I think it's a um, Dominican Republic he's from. He won $338, $338 million in the poor ball. But I think he's taking it up front, so he's getting 100 and uh, whatever million dollars. Up front, but the power ball, uh, the payout was 300 and something million dollars. But after taxes, it go down to 100 and something. This guy had five kids with this woman. And he ran away from them. And he had what? Back taxes or back child support of $129,000. So now he won the, the power ball lottery. There, there was a warrant out for his arrest. But because the, the authorities heard that he come in contact with this amount of money, they put a hole on the warrant and they say, come into court and settle it. <laughs> so <laughs> I was watching some of the video this morning. So he went into court and he settled it. And then, I don't know if he and his wife maybe was together on and off. Now his wife, I guess they kind of coming back together. But I know she's going to take a whole chunk of that. And she deserves to get a whole chunk of that. And it seems as though the way it's sung as if, well, these children that he leave behind for so long a time, it seems like he wants to take them in full control now so he could look after them. You see? So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, the, the way how we, we treat, we as men treat women, God is going to hold us responsible. And that's the reason why a lot of times we can be blessed. You know, guys, we're not supposed to mistreat. Don't mistreat your wife. Don't, tr don't take them for granted. Right. You know, I appreciate my wife, you know, the way how she does look after me. Right. You know, she makes sure I have um, food to eat. Right. Go and make the groceries. Right. She makes sure that laundry is taken care of. All she used to say to me, Eric, all I'm asking you, when you come home with your dirty clothes, put it in the, um, in the machine. Right. And sometimes I don't even bother to do that. I still take it and carry it upstairs. She will still get it and... So we, we, we owe a lot to them. And had it not been for women, some of us may not have the privilege to be here. Because as, as I said, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times, you know, as soon as things become hard in a family, we are thinking before supposed to run. Anytime things start to become hard in a family, before supposed to run, always seems to be the man running and leaving his wife behind. Um, with his children. And we can't be afraid to talk about, about these things. And church, I'm saying that this is happening more frequently in the black community. It is happening more frequently in the black community. And we need to start to talk about this, face this. It sounds bad when they're addressing these things on the radio. You'll hear them talking about these things and... Um, uh, CFRB 1010 and 640 and all of that, and people call in and they make all kind of remarks about uh, the black family, and they will connect all of the crime and all of the killing that is going on in the community. You know, it, they trace it right back because of the fact that black men not staying with their women. So we, we even in our homes, you young people who making children. You have your sons. You need to, it, it, that's the time you need to start to address these things. And you need to set the example in your home so that your son could see the way that you, you're looking after his mother. Because if your son sees 
some kind of bad habit in you as a father, the way how you're treating, you know, the mother. It's the same thing you're going to do. What monkey see? Yeah. Monkey do. So we, 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 we have to address this. And it's bad when the white community, the white community take this responsibility up, upon themselves and they're talking about it and we don't want to talk about it. In the black community, it seems to be a taboo. And we don't want to face this thing. But we have to face it. And don't, don't worry to try to carry it back to slavery. Don't worry. No, no. Don't even bother with that. I'm prepared. We, I'm going to let you talk. But don't bother to carry it back to slavery and say that the white man and it's because of the white man. No, that, that happened years ago. And we have to get over it. Go ahead, brother. Yes, pastor. That is quite true. But um, there's still, I still believe there's a strategy. And... and um, as they say, generation and generation, this thing passed down. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe it's only in God. Only when we come into God, we'll be able to break this cycle. And, and really do the things that is right. But with outside of God, mm-hmm. man can't really break that cycle. And, and, and I, I see it's a, it's a cycle, is a cycle that they have devised. Really, in some sense, I mean, say, I'm not um, excusing our men, our black men, because up to yesterday, my wife was telling me she went to um, a mall somewhere in Brantham down there. And when she went in the mall, she said, I see Chinese, I see Indian, mm-hmm. I see white, and I see no black. No black. Women we, shopping? N- not shopping, no black. Or so, a little, yeah, business. Oh. Good. No black people have a little. And I even have questioned myself concerning that when I came here. Okay. I said, all these white people have all these big construction companies and, and you can't go and find a black co- company. You know what I mean? So that shows us that um, it's either we, we think we mentality of thinking is, is poor in the sense that we figure we can't do it mm-hmm. or we, we be somewhere or the other being suppressed in the sense that we are prevented from doing it. But come back to the whole thing. They have devised this plan so good that they have separated us. And that thing passed down to our generation that our fathers remain um, separated out. So because they use us as stud, and some men still have that within them, that they will be stud, stud, jump well out all okay. over the place. All right. So, uh, okay. But uh, you, you make a lot of good points, okay? And you use the word um, suppressing. Yes, I know that the, the, the black community, even now with all of the um, freedom and all of the liberation and all of the, you know, President Obama is president now and we have a black president and all of that, suppression still going on. Uh, you know, uh, we, we know that. But with all of that, we in the black community, we need to change a lot of things. We need to change the way how we operate. The brother mentioned about um, you're not seeing black men, you know, doing business and stuff like that. But our mentality needs to change. Right. And what I'm going to say, a lot of you may not agree with me, but I personally, if I have some kind of um, job or any kind of business to give out into the community, to any business person out into the, the, the community, a black person will be the last person I might consider. I, I, well, I'm, and I'm going to tell you that too. I'm gonna, I'll tell you. That's what I'm saying. The way how we operate, the way how we operate, especially when we deal with one another, we don't deal with one another in a professional kind of way. If you have, uh, let's suppose you have your basement to finish, and you say, well, I'm going to call in a black brother, and you kind of, we want to keep the money in the black community and stuff like that, and you give your basement construction to a black brother, 85% of the time, he's not going to fulfill the obligation. He's going to take you for granted. He's going to take your money up front. When you want him to, to come and finish it, you're not going to see him. And he just takes you for granted. And just because they consider all of us as, you know, from the ghetto, and you could just do him anything, you know, even the performance of the work, you perform the work in any kind of shabby kind of way and just leave it and go and take the money and go. No accountability. And that's the way we operate. And I'm, I'm telling you, 
if I have a job to do, unless, for instance, like Brother Fraser and Brother Telesford, these guys, I know them for years, and I know that they're not going to, um, they're not going to, to run no skullduggery on me. So I will give Brother Fraser a job. But look at, for instance, we have the job here for the, um, the architect. Brought in this architect to do the job. You know, trust him. Say he wants half up front. You know, I give him half up front. And he was supposed to get the other half when the, the, the job was completed. You know, he came back. Oh, you know, I have some urgent problem. Please, Pastor Duncan, please uh, advance me some more. My wife said, Eric, don't do it. You know, oh, he called how many times. You can't let me down. Advance him some more up front. Now it's four years we're going on, and you can't get him to work. And if you call him, he get angry, and stuff like that. If it was a white person we was dealing with, I'm sure that we would have something in hand already. Look what happened with Brother Dawkins. Brother Dawkins is another black brother. We take him to do the wiring here. He does do it in any kind of shabby old kind of way. You're trying to get him get, come back to finish. He wouldn't come back. So we don't, we don't operate in a professional kind of way. And uh, these are things that we have to look at. And these are things that we have to talk about. And uh, until we start to change these, these things, we're not going to advance. But getting back to the family, we can't blame what happened in slavery for what we're doing today. And uh, Brother Tennyson was saying that um, it takes divine intervention for these things um, to change. In a way, I agree, and in a way, I don't agree. Because what, what's, what's going on in the, the white community, what's taking place in the black community where family is concerned, you're not seeing it in the white community as much. Some of these um, uh, fathers running out and children running out and their wife and, you know, um, black guys making kids with four and five different women and stuff like that. You don't see that. So um, rampant in the, in the black community, the, the, the brother used the word that black men want to be studs. And we, we, have to, we have to start telling our young men and our sons that they can't grow up to be no studs. Don't, don't try to follow no um, guy we see in the ghetto who have five children with five different women. That is not a good example. And until we face that, it's not going to change yet. Well, you see, the thing is that because we as black men, we see, we look at having a, a, black, a white woman. When a black man have a white woman as his wife or as his fiancée or whatever, girlfriend, whatever you want to call it, it's like you have a trophy. It's like you have a trophy. You have something, you put it in a glass case, and you just polish it, you watch it, take off, dust off of it, and stuff like that. That is how you have that white woman. And I, I don't really see anything wrong with that. But the thing is, we're supposed to have the black woman the same way too. Is this week, um, my bosses and them at work, they were talking about this and they were saying that, um, you know, we black men, we don't treat the way how they pamper their white wife and their white woman. We as black men, we don't pamper um, our black women in that kind of way. And uh, they, they're saying that is the reason why so many black guys from the black community taking white women. And uh, I say, well, uh, I, 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 you have a, a point there, but if you notice, the black men who take in white women is those who um, a achieve status in life, they become rich, and they move up in life. As soon as a black man move up in life, a right, a white woman is there to, um, to right. But what causing that? All of that needs to be addressed too. We need to address that. I think, I think that is an inferiority, inferiority complex with the black man. Why is that? Right? Be because the black man figure that he has to have a white woman to be somebody when, he sh when it should not be. And another thing again that I discover, and not only here when I came to Canada, but I discovered it back in our country too, that um, most of the time, the, the, the black man will use the white woman. It's not so much that he really cares or loves the white woman, you know. But he will use the white woman for an avenue and a way out. But what's happening now is that the white woman now becomes so smart 
that the, the, the pin the black man in a way now that he can't really do anything and run away. He can't really run away now. First time he do things and he run away. But now he can't run away. So, you know, mostly find them like some kind of two. You don't have to walk from him and get to be and which way this woman will have more money in her bank account than a black woman and all of that. I know all of that. But the thing is, one of the problems too is that white women tend to treat black men better than a black woman will treat a black man. Listen, let me finish. I, I, it seems as though the, 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 the white woman, they will... They will relate in a loving kind of way. <laughs> they relate in a loving kind of way. They're more attentive. It seems as though they're more caring. They're more, um, you know, <laughs> they're giving more love then. They're giving more love than what the black, the black woman will give to the black man. That's what I'm hearing out there. That's the word on the street. And I think that's the hard truth. No, and, and again, and again, um, sisters, our sisters, sisters in the black community, most of them, they're too feisty. You know, they, they, they you know, hyper and they, you know, kind of, they're not, they're not submissive. They, we, that's, that, I'm telling you, that's the word on the street. That's what I'm hearing. We're not, we not as, our ladies, they're not as submissive to us, and because of that, then that tends to more or less kind of drive in some of the brothers away. So, <laughs> so, so the, the thing is, that's what I'm saying. We had to, um, we had to face, listen, we had to face the truth, and we had to face the truth. And these are things that we have to address. We have to address these things. We, we our ladies need to mellow out. Mellow. Yeah, they need. To, you guys need to mellow out, especially when you're dealing with your husband. Mellow. You know, mellow out. Mellow out when you, you know, you have your kids, you have your sons coming up, your daughters. Mellow out. Why is that faster? Why is that faster? Eh? Why is that faster? Cool out. Yes, yeah, cool out. Mellow out. Mellow. <laughs> mellow out. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, let, let me look at this again. Um, if, we, if we're talking about Christians, mm. of all the people, right? Of all the persons, somebody that just... Well, I have class them the most of them be sinners. And what sinners are sinners sin? And they don't have kind of deep regards for morality, uh -huh. right? They tend to do things carelessly. But we as Christians that know Christ, know the love of God, we know we expect to um, deport ourselves better, respectable, you know, share love. But what, what I do see, that some women think that the person supposed to, that has to share all the love is the, is the man. But that's not true. I believe that love is supposed to be balanced. It's a balanced thing. You share and share. And another thing again, what I really see that feeling in, in relationship, that the husband is supposed to get respect, respect. A lot of respect, but... Most wives today want to respect their husband, and I believe that that is something that um, a, lot, a lot of men have been craving for. Some form of respect. Yeah. And that's not the most fundamental thing in a relationship, you know. Respect. And once the husband don't see this thing, he tends to feel unhappy. Things are going far. Don't, you go put, yeah, put love aside for a while. Put communication aside for a while. But you see, respect is very, very fundamental in a relationship. Well, that, that, that is. Yeah, um, listen, what, what, we, what we are doing, what we are doing, we are putting out the hard truth. And a lot of times, we can't, can you guys handle the hard truth? We, ha <laughs> we have to handle the hard truth. And if we want to make changes in, in our community, we have to talk about these things. Somebody mentioned back there that um, the white women doing things that the black women won't do. Yeah. And listen, where, where taking care of your husband is concerned 
in the bedroom. There's nothing, um, there's, there, there's no set of restriction placed upon anybody except where um, homosexual activities and uh, anal sex and all this kind of thing is prohibited in the Bible. But what, what goes on in the bedroom is between husband and wife. So once there is no, um, what do you call it, off-key or off-line kind of thing going on, that, that is prohibited in the Bible. Um, whatever happens in the bedroom is between a husband and a wife. And you can, um, you know, sit back and relax and you're not providing um, the kind of care that your husband wants. And especially he's not a man of God. After a while, he's going he's gonna to leave you right there. He's going he, he to leave you on the shelf. So, ladies, don't, don't, jump, don't use that as no defense. That's not no defense. If the white woman could take care of the black man, you should be able to take care of him too. We have to look, listen, we have to, we have to look after um, our husbands. Husbands have to look after their wives. Wives, you need to look after your husband. The brother talk about respect. And we, we can't hide from that. That is true. Our black women not so respectful. What would it mean, Jerry? What would it mean? Uh, uh, listen, what would, we're talking about we 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 we're putting out the hard truth. We putting out the hard truth. We had to learn, ladies. You had to learn to be respectful to your husband. You had to learn to submit to your husband. Uh, that, listen, it's only one thing men are asking for, you know. A little respect. Is, is respect they are asking for? That's all they are asking for. Respect. And in, in return, if you respect your husband, your husband is going to love you. I, don't, I, I never meet no man who gets in any respect from getting respect, the kind of respect that he requires from his wife. He, if he is getting that, that man is going to love his woman to death. Amen. But in every case, you hear a man crying out for respect. They, they, because you, you're just a human being. It doesn't matter how much man of God you say you is. Right. If you're not getting the kind of respect that you're supposed to get, it makes you feel, it, 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 over a period of time, it destroys your manhood in a way. And if you're not getting that kind of respect, you start to withhold your love. You're not supposed to be, but it happens because we're all human. So what we're saying, um, ladies, and from time to time I keep talking about, that, talk, talking about this in this show. You need to respect your husband. Husband, you need to love your wife. Your wife needs to take number one place in your life. Can't put nobody else before your wife. Husband supposed to respect your wife. Yes. It's a husband not showing no respect. Your wife is going to disrespect her. Yes. Yes. I second that. All right. Okay. The respect, the respect in the relationship has to be mutual. It has to be, it has to be both ways. It has to be both ways. But as we said, as, listen, hold on, hold on. As we said, we are talking about what's going on in the black community. And we want the hard truth. We still want the hard truth? Yes. Listen, we said respect has to be mutual. But at the same time, where respect is concerned, Men in the black community more craving for that. And it seems as though they're not getting it. Amen. Yes. I'm more hearing, because I, just, I, I talk to a lot of guys, and I'm more hearing that, even though they don't really say it out plain, underneath, underneath their words, behind what they really want to say, you're hearing that, that they're calling for respect. So ladies, it had to be that they, there's a problem. I agree to. I, I agree to. But what we're saying, ladies, you want to keep your man, right? You want to keep your man. So you have to do. Listen. Uh, wait a minute. We we dealing with the hard truth. You want to keep your man, okay? You don't want you don't want all of them to run off and go out into the, the white community. You want to keep your man. That's what you want to do. So you you had to do what you have to do to keep him. And if he calling for. More respect, a little bit more respect. Give him some respect. And maybe you try it and see if it's going to work. But it seems as though you guys don't want to budge. Uh, let me say one more thing. I, 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 I'll go back to say again. From my experience as, 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 as a man, 
Sometimes I will just surrender everything. I will surrender everything and even some will crawl from the ground and, and do what I can do. do. Yeah, but, but, right? but, but, but no, yes. I, yes, brother, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I, I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I, I know what you're saying. But, you know, how, how much time, how much time you will have to do that? Well, how well, much time you have to do that? It, how much time you have to do that before this wife would say, but well, this, this husband, he's a really submissive kind of guy. Look what he's doing for me. Don't you think, sh- you know, she should be doing that in return too? Yes. If you have that kind of stubborn person that every time something goes wrong, you have to crawl on your face and crawl on your knees. Th- that relationship not going nowhere. You're not supposed to be like that. Well, yeah, but I know. But what I'm saying, it, it sometimes that will have to take place. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes right. I crawl sometimes on my face have too. To, that, uh, <laughs> sometimes, yes. Sometimes for peace. You know, uh, you have to crawl on your face because, you know, as I keep telling you guys that, if the woman don't happen in the ho- if she's not happy in the home, that home is going to fall apart. If the woman is not happy in the home, if I am not happy, uh, you know, maybe uh, for a few hours or maybe for a day, you know, things might be a little bit upside down. But you're not going to go, you're not going to go on for long. But if my wife's not happy in my house and I don't try to make her happy, that home is going to fall apart. And it's the same thing too in your house. So it's our responsibility to really make them happy. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm hearing is that it seems as though a lot of men in the black community, in the home, are very unhappy where lack of respect or showing them respect is concerned. So what we are saying, ladies, what we are saying, try to address that. Yeah, well, well uh, yes, I agree with you in a sense because you guys really need to respect yourself in truth because especially where choosing a man is concerned. You know, um, yes, choosing a man, you know, so much of those guys out there in the community who have five kids already with five different women and coming towards you guys. For instance, a guy coming to, to you and you don't even check in to see how much kids he have. And sometimes even though you find out that he has five kids with five different women, it seems as though you guys don't really care about that. So on, 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 that, on, that front, on that front, I'll say that you guys need to um, have um, um, respect for yourself. Because if you respect yourself and you, a guy checking you out and you have three kids, whether it's with one or two or three different women, how much do you think he could give to you? Yes, it's about the kids. It's about the kids. It's about the kids. Yeah. Yes, it's about the kids too, because the, the thing is, if you could do that to those two or three women, it's the same thing going to do to you. So what we're saying, we want to stop, we want to stop the cycle. We, and and, and it's, it's you ladies who need to put on tight pants and keep on your tight pants. And don't make these guys get in, into that tight pants. Don't make them get into it for nothing at all. Unless you see the quality that you're looking for. But, uh, you know, we have to address it from both sides. Not just, I know you have bad guys out there too. But you guys have to try to, um, to, to, you know, be decisive and make sure that the person that you're looking for is the person you're going to take. Don't tell yourself because you're on the shelf there for a while. Anybody who come along, you have to just take them. You have to wait and, and choose the right person. One more thing, Pastor. All right. Now, regarding to this thing with white woman, I still don't see it, you know. As I said before, and if we consider it good, look at, look at our black society. Look at India. Look at Africa. In India, they, they can burn up women. They can treat them bad. They rape them. They throw them aside. Why? Because there is no protection in that country, mainly for women. Women is looked as an outcast. In Africa, in some place, is the same thing. Okay? Some part in the Caribbean is the same thing. But when you come to North America and Europe, where there are laws, you think, you think, you think a black man can go and beat a white woman, eh? Ten police will come and kick him from here to No, well, there. not just white woman. Not just, uh, you can't, uh, and in, no, but mainly, in this society, I not even. Mainly white woman. The laws no, no, are no, hard no, no, no. All women. All women, they, have, they all have the same protection here. Every one of them. <laughs> no, you can't, you can't, you can't. Um, no, what are these concerned? What are these concerned? Women have protection in this country. You know, even, even those of us, even for instance in my case, 
in my case, if um, some misunderstanding happened in my house, I make sure that I keep my voice down. I don't want my voice to be heard outside because if neighbors should hear my voice shouting and they call police, even though I was in the right, you think police is going to take my wife and go? No, the only, if, if police come in my house for dispute, the only sign they're going to take my wife and go is if they see some sign of violence, maybe she busts me head or whatever, you know, whatever, and I have some kind of sign of violence on my body. But different to that, if they call, if, if, if police is called to your house for domestic dispute, most of the time is the man they're going to haul away. And it, it's the same thing too where the, the court is concerned. They're just saying that they want to address the way how judges deal with these um, family matters because most of the time, um, is a woman who gets in the custody of the, um, the kids. They just start to try to address these issues now. But anyway, we don't want to get into all that. We, 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 we want to stay before, before, before we and we're going to have to close. And before, we, before we close. Praise the Lord. Be, be, before we close, uh, you, you were surprised to know, Pastor, eh, that people are working, Christians are working in various places. And it may take a, maybe an interview, may interview some other people, non-Christians. Um, that working in this, maybe the certain companies. And the type of, the way they will tell you, most of this Christian behavior is worse, those, worse than those that I didn't save. Yeah, it's worse than those that I'm telling you. Because I could hear that most of the people will tell me about some people's behavior. I don't have to keep quiet. Christ, people that profess to be Christian, God fearing people, their behavior is very rotten. You know? And these are the things that I say now we have to make a, dis- a distinction between the unsaved. And the saved person, the person that is born again, that they're not supposed to act in as the ungodly way. We as Christians, people that married, we're supposed to deport ourselves in a Christ-like manner. Yeah. We're supposed to be examples. And this is not what the, 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 the other community, because it, it's not the politicians that are supposed to make a difference, you know. The church is supposed to make the big difference in our community. Yeah. We're supposed to show an example to those unsaved. And they're not getting it in the church because the, 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 the um, church people are doing the same thing. Well, well who going to address it? Who 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 start to address the situation? And the church is, is failing. All right, we're gonna to have to close it for today. But in closing, I'll just like to let you guys know that when when we have a, any kind of problem that goes on in our family, in our marriage relationship, it's an indirect attack by Satan right. on our salvation. When Satan attacks your marriage. It's not just your marriage alone you want to get in. He wants to get your salvation. So you have to know that when there's any kind of problem taking place or developing in your marriage relationship, the devil wants to get at your soul. And we have to close up the door. All of these different um, openings that we, we, we have for him to come in where our family is concerned, we have to close it up. As I said to you um, guys, it is your responsibility to be the husband in the house. And the word husband, it's two words. It's house ban. It means that you have to ban your house, ban your family together. It is your house ban. Not house, house. The interpretation of the word is house ban. Means to ban, ban the family together. So it is our responsibility to keep the household together. Whatever you need to do. As the brother says sometimes, you crawl on your face. If you need to crawl on your face a few times, crawl on your face. Keep your family together. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't make things fall apart. When you stand before Jesus, make sure that your wife and your children them is there too. Especially your wife. Don't stand there before Jesus by yourself. You, you know, won't that be a good thing? We, we find ourselves before the throne of God in heaven and you look on your side, you see your wife right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, who is the church? It's us who make up the church. It's us who make up the, the church. But the thing is, Brother Lewis, you and Sister Lewis got to try to do all your, little, all your little thing to contribute. Me and Sister Duncan, we try to do a little thing to contribute to where family relationship is concerned. Brother um, uh, um, Mackenzie and his wife, Brother um, Tellis, Brother Cole, Brother Andel, Brother Davis. You know, everybody who married is us who have to um, set the example. So all of these people who are coming up behind, you know, Sister Shani, oh, I miss Sister Gail over there. All of these people who who not married yet, 
They need to look at us. When, they look, when, when, when people look at me and Sister Duncan, you know, it, 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 and they see the way how we live, they should be encouraged to get married. But if you look at me and Sister Duncan, I say, boy, not me. You know, I see your pastor treating his wife there. I see kind of verbal abuse he's giving there. I see she's not looking like she's happy. Me don't want to get into that. Who, who's going to want to get married? Okay, yes. And Praise the Lord. Thing. We don't have to quote. One more thing, about, and yeah, what, what we must understand to us Christian people that um, as Christian people, as you mentioned before, the devil is against us, wants to attack us. And as Christian people too, we will have conflict. You know? We will have um, disagreement in, in mind. Right. Not because we are Christian, everything will go smooth. You know? We have to understand that. All right. Yeah, man. Well, yes, yes. I, well, I told my wife, I told my wife, once she do what I say, everything will be all right. <laughs> I just... <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, Brother T, ask God, bless it as we close. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege and opportunity that we can come.